Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to some more KSL action. And, well, we had him. Hopefully, we loved him. At least I did. Always love casting with him. It's gonna be a co caster once again. My wonderful colleague from CSO Esports is Jono, aka Linglad. Linglad, you here? How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, and you, man. Thanks for having me. Well, it's always a pleasure, and I'm good. Thank you. Ready to cast a wonderful ZVP best of three series. Uh, this is going to be on the lower end of the Grandmaster ladder. Uh, well, actually, it's not the ladder game, though, because this is still from uh, the Korean StarCraft League. We'll talk about it more in a second. But map is going to be Neo Humanity. Starting at the top left side, we have the Blue Zerg. Or the Blue Zerg Jones. It's going to be from Dragon Kaiser Gaming. It's Hyperion. And his opponent in the bottom right is uh, the red Protoss player. It's Rebellion. I actually have no idea who Rebellion is. I had no real idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had no idea who Hyperion is, but it looks like we're gonna see from the playstyle. We have some greedy shenanigans coming up. Pretty standard opening on the Protoss side. Ooh, and actually. Rebellion scouted this uh, forward base. Yeah, yeah. I think Raynor just started a, a trend here. He loves playing this build, or at least loved playing this build order. I believe he played it on, in Katowice as well. Uh, so yeah, Hyperion, as much as I know about him, because I looked up who Hyperion is. Hyperion, I believe if I understood correctly, is the manager of DKZ. If you haven't heard, uh, yep, Dragon geez. Phoenix Gaming actually disbanded and Kaiser Gaming as well. And now they merged and now it's Dragon Kaiser Gaming. It's pretty That's interesting. Correct. And he is the uh, the manager there. You are correct. I mean, I, I, you mentioned that uh, Reynor likes to do this build and I like the fact that he's Hyperion's going for this really forward natural expansion. I suppose we call it a natural yeah, I guess so. We call it the natural. Uh, well, this is currently the natural. When it takes a, a relatively standard timing third base, it's going to expand backwards. Of course, the reach rest mean, uh, means that there is a lot of potential for uh, higher tech stuff. Ooh, look yeah. at that. I actually love yeah. this play. He's going to just damage the coolant towers, maybe even destroying them. Yeah. <laughs> I think he will be taking down the cooling towers because I mean, that's the just going to block. The probe is helping. <laughs> the probe is helping. There's a lone probe here. <laughs> it's like, oh, this this takes uh, so much damage, dude. What the hell? Probe OP, man. Dude, but you don't even hear it. You don't even hear it. <laughs> like, you couldn't yeah. hear uh, the sound from the other side. That's crazy. Yeah. Big, big brain player by Hyperion. Taking down those cooling towers and actually blocking that off, it really makes this forward base so um, defendable, man. The Protoss has to come from either the right-hand ramp or the left-hand ramp, but, I mean, this forward base, and you've sort of, like, given, almost guaranteed themselves uh, five bases. Ooh, yeah, that's true. Actually, Excluding. wow, that's actually... Yeah, you start spreading creep, actually, on both, uh, both ends of the... Yeah. These entrances. Um, yeah, and I mean, that's it's such a big brain play. Hyperion bringing the... This is something I'm gonna try to do. <laughs> Ooh, and look at this. Warpism with a single stalker. I believe we're going to see some warpins as well. It's gonna scout that there's no vision here. There's yeah, no five. overlord in position to see the stalker. Five more gateways, yeah, that's yeah. also true. Gonna be a huge warpin coming out of uh, Rebellion, which I like. I mean, he's um, 430, so it's about Ooh. time for. This is a one. This is a one, uh... Sorry, what did I want to say? Not one base, sorry, this is a two base all in, in my opinion. Especially because this was walled off at uh, the yeah. natural. And how many gateways? So it's going to be six, yeah, six gateways. Maybe even seven. No, that's actually only six gateways with a single robo. Ooh, and look at this, there's a lot of stalkers, even a sentry. Stalkers do well against uh, roaches as well. 
If you can keep the Immortal alive, I believe uh, you are in a good spot as the Protoss. Rebellion has a lot of money, so it can keep warping in stuff. Kind of like that. Hyperion there with a couple Ravages. Yeah, just gonna push those... Um, Ooh, yeah, nice force fields. Oh, man. Such great force fields. Chuck, catching off quite a bit of the army there. Of Hyperion. And, oh, a good Warper is a micro as well. Keeping that Immortal alive as Hyperion starts to bleed off a few units. You need to be careful because at this point if you bleed out too many units then you need to remake them and if you need to remake them then it's going to cost you in terms of economy in the long run question oh. is does uh does hyperion know that this is an all-in we'll check in a moment if the things cool off but i think this is going to be full committed nice warp is a micro here trying to save the sentries and the immortal trying to do whatever possible Ooh, Ooh, I, feel like, I feel like Hyperion could have got a couple cheeky vials onto those warping, uh, Zealous warping in there. Rebellion, gonna pick up and pick up a few units in that war prism, head off to the, to the top of the map and just disengage from the front. I think you are right, this is pretty committed. No third base on the way. Complete Maybe these the Zealots there. will come back and just uh, start. Actually, you could mine out these, uh, these minerals. Like the gold minerals, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's going to start and... Uh, Try and deal with this uh this pylon that's blocking him i'm probably gonna go for a third base that is quite interesting no actually is going to mine out the gold i mean Re rebellion with this war prism is scouted that there's absolutely no mining happening at the natural base of hyperion so that means no third base uh drones so could yeah, tell a couple of things well of course this was like a pre-committed push so units had to be uh had to be produced from uh, the, from the larva that actually spawned. Yeah, yeah. And that was actually a great call by you, man. Pointing out that the gold minerals could be mined and that the third base could be taken where it is currently being taken now for rebellion. So, not actually I'm opening that wall. See this. Oh, but there's no wall here, so this is going to be really, really dangerous. Actually, the natural is open, so mining all of the gold ba uh, gold minerals could be uh, the bane of rebellion. Because yeah, now you need, I think, gold. two force fields to block it off. And you actually need to surgically place those force fields, if I'm not mistaken. Well, Rebellion placed some sick force fields earlier when he was putting that pressure on Hyperion. So I That's believe he true. can do it if, if, he needs to, if it needs to be done, it can be done. But Hyperion now finally starting to uh, push that drone count up. And there we go, Ling Bane, failing nest on the way. Spire on the way. So Mutiling Bane, I think, is... Or do you, or do you think um, he's just sort of pulling out the tech tree for now? Mutiling Bane could actually be uh, a good thing. Uh, Mutas are obviously really good at uh, harassing. That's a lot of queens. Man. Nine queens on the map so far. Imagine you have one at each hatchery. You still have uh, six queens that you can harass with. Potentially seven if you're near a base, so... That Warpism doesn't survive five seconds uh, when it's attacked by five queens, or six yeah. queens, sorry. Ooh, uh, a couple uh, of Banelings. Yeah, Baneling speed about halfway done is... Looks like Rebellion's... Uh, rebellion's, I was going to say, it's going to move out, and yeah. Well, that's it's looks gonna like uh, being the case. One more oh. Colossus should join, probably. Oh. Some great scouting things there by Harp here. I'm gonna catch wind of this pretty early on and Yeah, yeah now he's going to see it because it steps on creep, so let's see how this uh, push can work out. Uh Bailings are going to be your huge, huge problem, especially if speed finishes. Question how much Rebellion knows about uh, this timing? Because first you need to get rid of those Bailings, nice force fields. Brilliant force fields, but gets taken out by the Rapture Piles. Now bailing speed is uh, completed, but the force fields keep on coming. Yeah, nice Hyperion doing a pretty good. I was gonna say Hyperion doing a pretty good job of uh, coming in from the side. There, a few of those bailings connecting, not enough, but uh, a few of them connecting and forcing Rebellion to go back a little bit. A couple of depths do shade into what is actually now they the... killed eight drones. That's crazy. Yeah, well, I actually managed to finish nine? the nine. Yeah. The dip manages to finish off into uh, the natural. 
that sort of brings Hyperion's drone count lower than uh, Rebellion. So Rebellion, after that two ba committed two base, is actually up in workers and uh, really making a game of this. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I suppose it's the map. I think we, we talked about it a couple of times when we casted New Humanity that this is a weird map because still you walled off the front of your base. You just mine out the side minerals and you basically have an exit. Ooh, yes. huge wow. disruptor shot! I yep. loved it! A nice force field is just letting them flow in in a single line. But that's going to be the bait of it, actually. No pun intended here. Shield battery overcharge is being popped, but it's going to get piled down. What does Hyperion yeah. have here? Oh, another huge disruptor shot. Yeah, okay. I mean, just going to throw down some corrosive bars. It is literally Ling Bane or Ling Roach Ravager right now. So the Triple Colossi are going to do so well against those Ravagers and... Even they have extended thermal lance, so this Colossi with such huge range. I believe Rebellion. it's like a nine range or, or something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Not Rebellion sure how Colossi. huge the range is. And I think uh, Rebellion's in a pretty decent position. He did actually bleed off both of his uh, disruptors there, so I mean, he's got one on the field now and another one on the way. But there you go, three Vipers on the way for Hyperion. Hyperion gonna start to harpoon those. Yeah, the hive was done, and look at this uh, hive location. It's actually not in the main, not in the the front, not at the third. So it's, it's at the natural. Yeah. I kind of like this. If you can, uh, f like, wall yourself with uh, additional bases, then it's going to be really hard to actually take it down. Whereas if you have it in the main, a huge oh. warping of uh, of like zealots can actually just go in and take it down. If that's the case, yeah. and you really hate seeing uh, when a zerg loses the hive, like. At 50 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I have to agree with you there. Probably the most painful thing um, is, is having a Protoss go into your main base and taking out all your tech structures and then the hive on top of that, man. It's really painful because you yeah, start from scratch. Chopping but... your head, basically, chopping off the, the head of that Zerg that loses the yeah. hive. Yeah, Rebellion, once again, just pushing up, sort of clearing creep and saying to Hyperion, I'm not going to give you vision on my side of the map. Oh, he's gonna get two two queens for free here. Okay, gets one. Oh, look this, at this is going to be a huge opportunity. Some harpoons onto those colossi and the disruptor. This is really really tough for for rebellion here. Hyperion yeah. just pushing forward. Those stalkers don't do so well against Link's adrenal is finished. Bailings roll in and GG is called. Hyperion yeah. takes game number one. Yeah, rebellion sort of. Pushing at that at the front door here. I, I really like the fact that he was keeping the creep under control, but just get, maybe stepping a little too far forward and giving Hyperion the opportunity to collapse on his army. Great, uh, great harpoons by those uh, vipers, getting rid of those um, tech high tech units, and yeah, just taking that sophistication out of out of um, Rebellion's army and. Actually, did you see those banelings at the end, man? They were just basically They're running crazy. around the army. Just running around the army and they're just collapsing on all those stalkers. Feels bad for Rebellion, but Hyperion... Yeah, uh, game number one. Yeah. Ooh, and what's this? Oh, never mind. It said Aria Valley Jungle or something in the lobby. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what that was. What? The second map is going to be Dragon Scales. And I'm not sure, but this looks like this looks like to be the Zerg map pick, if I'm not mistaken. At least you would assume. Yeah, I mean nice open map. Not too many choke points. I mean there are choke points, but nice. You know, good opportunity to move around the map rather free rather freely and uh, really looking to see if uh, Hyperion can do a couple Ling Run bars and catch Rebellion off guard. We'll see. Rebellion. Yep. We'll see how it's going to go. Yep. Well, then let's just shortly, but uh, most importantly for the crowd, once again, we have in the top left side our Red Protoss trying to bring it back in this best of three series. It's Rebellion. And his opponent in the bottom right for Dragon Kaisi Gaming. Up 1-0, it's the Blue Zerg Hyperion. 
sick games, man, honestly, uh, so far that we casted. Really, really nice games. Uh. You know what I just realized, man? Olivera, the Katowice champion, plays for Dragon Kaiser Gaming. Yeah, that's true. And Hero Formerly and for Kaiser. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Also, if you... If guys, if you would like to to have Linglad more on the channel, feel free to drop that in the comments. As well as if you have any specific player uh, that you would like me to cast, then be sure to leave a comment as well, and I'll try my best to get replays from that specific player. Of course, I'm kind of limited because. Unlike some of the top casters in the community, I sadly don't have access to all those replays, so... Yeah, feels bad. But if we can, we will. Yeah. Let us know. We saw a hash block, which is kind of powerful. Forces the Zerg to take the third. Um, but on this map, I believe, unless you put it on the high ground, like the triangle one, uh, the adept is not going to get there faster. It's a bit of a loss, a uh, bit of a loss mining time, because drones need to get uh, take a uh, further route, basically. I have to travel yeah. more to get to that extra base. Also, linking bases is going to be much harder. So yeah, now we see pretty standard timing for that third base as well. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much as things are, and we get Stargate opener here for Rebellion. Also, Rebellion just came in to, to check if there's uh, mining on this second base, so make sure that there's no like, empty hatchery shenanigans. Yeah. Also saw yeah. that dirt hatchery, so no yeah. issues there. Seems that everything is standard. Ooh, nice sport trick, to be honest. Kind of yeah. like that. Yeah, really quick reaction there by... Um... Hyperion is actually going to lose this Overlord to the Stalker if he's not careful. Yeah. Yeah, that's one dead Ovi. That's going to supply block him. No that's Ovi's in production close. yet. So. Ooh, it's, it doesn't realize, I think. Oh, maybe now? Yeah. Yeah. Did he try to make a queen or something? Yeah, he tried to make a queen and he got supply blocked, so. Ooh, but no, the base hasn't finished yet, so. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll um, give him some supply, but there we go, first Oracle comes out, gonna start taking some damage right away from these Queens, doesn't actually get in there. Yeah, kind of unlucky for Rebellion, Queens were in position, uh, no Spore at the, the natural position yet, pretty sure there's going to be a Spore. I mean, if you can manage to, yep, if you can manage to just uh, hold from the sides, then the Oracle will never uh, make it in, anyways. Second yeah, that's Oracle something. Is out. That's something that uh, gets me, man. Like, if if your opponent, like, if you play against Hero, for instance, you know he's gonna go triple Oracle. He's really gonna come in and he's gonna tax you. Why not look, throw down two spores? And then you know you're extra safe. It's something that, I mean, I'd, I'd like the opportunity to ask some of the high level pros, like, you know, why, what's the advantage? We see it's a little bit of lost mining time, but they just lost two drones. Um, yep. What if one of those just went, became a spore crawler and you had double spores protecting, like just the fringe bases, like here in your main or like at your third or something? Yeah, that's awesome? really interesting. That's a really interesting question. I, do. I don't know. Maybe it's not efficient. And if you yeah. like micro perfectly, then you can basically get away with like single spores. Yeah, but you know what I mean. They they never do it. And actually, when uh, I'm not gonna sidetrack or two. Uh, actually, wait. Let's Ooh, that's a lot of links thing, here. Yeah, yeah. And these two adepts look like uh, going down. A couple more are being warped in, and this might. Ooh, okay. Rebellion gives uh, away the adept play. And we got bad news, uh, Mr. Rebellion. Yeah. Hopefully it's a mister. The way. There's there's <laughs> roaches on the way. Yeah. When when I saw Glaives um, on the way and the roach warren was almost done, I was like, oh, let's hope that uh, Rebellion can actually get the damage he needs because, yeah, roaches Ooh, do really well. Oh, against. it doesn't even cancel, but these are a lot of adepts. These are 17, yeah. 16 adepts left still. 
Uh, he's going to bleed out a couple of them, but at least around like 10 adepts should make it into the main. Nine adepts make it into the main. That's going to be a lot of drones going down. Look at that. Yep. Hyperion is actually down in workers now compared to Rebellion. And yeah, he might just get away with these adepts. Yeah, there's also three adepts in the of... Six o'clock base, I got some more drones, man. These adepts, this adept pressure from Rebellion is, uh, yeah, pretty sick, man. I mean, he's uh, almost double the, the work account now of Hyperion. Hyperion down 22 workers. Yeah, he had to make a lot of uh, roaches from those larvae, but actually couldn't make any drones. So it's kind of painful and still has to make units. Now Blink is on the way, Dirt Oracle is on the way as well. And plus one, so we're going to see a Blink Stalker follow-up. Um, do we have a Robo? No Robo yet, so no War Prism uh, by the looks of it. This Oracle is going to move forward. Ooh, but there's four Queens. Luckily, not yeah. all of them are in position. There's Queens. Ooh, but these have no... Wait, this is actually all in, I think, from Hyperion. If yeah, you ask like... me, this is a Queen Walk. There's no transfusion on these queens, so unless Hyperion's gonna throw down some <laughs> a, a little a few Ooh, queens. That's actually crazy. That's a really good uh, stasis, especially because the queen cannot move out now and it's going to get trapped there. Ooh, this might actually be Rebellion's lucky lucky day. Yeah, Again, Hyperion off. has no idea that Rebellion's taken a fourth base there. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's pretty all in now with these queens off a of creep. Morphing a couple more ravages on the front lines here, but... It takes a Rebellion. very long time compared to the previous patch. When there's another stasis, does he see it? That's the question. We'll see. We could see oh. a bit. Oh, that's a few zerglings being trapped. And now there's no nothing to tank uh, against those stalkers. A couple yep. more zerglings joined, though. And now the oracles come in and three oracles will deal with a lot of ravagers pretty, pretty fast. As well as queens. There's yeah, no overlord on the side of Hyperion either to drop creep. Yeah, some great uh, blink micro here by, Re by Rebellion, and I think Rebellion is just going to land up holding this one. Pretty well. Okay, all the or two or two out of three oracles go down, so that's that's a big one. Yeah, but these Ravagers have yeah. really no uh, nothing left here, and I believe, honestly, I believe we're going to see the GG pretty soon. There's 39 yeah, workers compared to the 57 of uh, the Rebellion. Yeah, no drones on that third base for Hyperion as Rebellion's up to four bases. Okay, nice going to Mon from Road the speed base. just starts. That is super, super late. Yeah. Link speed is uh, already done, so these links can actually... Ooh, they're going to move in and see this uh, four base. That is actually quite a, a huge thing. And sees <laughs> yeah. it and taps out. Rebellion takes game number two. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that, those links that uh, caught wind of all those adepts, um, you know, and the roaches being on the way, I thought Hyperion really had that that defense, but uh, you, could, you can't lose uh, 15 drones to those. I mean, it was a big commitment. There were a lot of glaive adepts, but uh, I that think That was Hyperion like 20, I think. That was yeah. around 20 glaive adepts, like. And, and there were another three hitting the third base location that, you know, just... I think just pulling Hyperion apart, just splitting his attention too far in Rebellion. I mean, it's proven that Glaive Adepts still work, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, it's like, kind of like, it's really tough to, to play against Roaches in that regard, but it's actually, it's doable. It's doable, right? So there's, there's a chance, and if you can micro your Glaive Adepts properly and have like really good shades, maybe just uh, have a couple of them shade to another base, then probably you can pull it off even versus roaches, though they are considered kind of the counter to it. Yeah. Anyways, starting at the bottom left side in the third map, which is Ancient Cistern, we have the player who actually came back with a sexy, sexy at that play. It's going to be our Red Protoss Rebellion. And his opponent in the top right, the Dragon Kazi Gaming. Once again, it's a Blue Zerg player, Hyperion. Getting hatch blocked, of course. Yep. I saw that uh, probe moving out, and I was like, okay, another hatch block. Yep. 
Uh, I've been talking to to Winter, the Hungarian uh, Grandmaster Protoss Winter, the original one, uh, and he was like, "Yeah, I definitely recommend blocking the hatcheries because uh, it's it's really good." And I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out if I if I saw Molsten do it. Another one of our teammates. Um, He's also like a, a GM Protoss, so yeah, we, we finally have uh, at least a GM Protoss as well. I'm super happy about it. <laughs> in, in, in a very Zerg dominated clan. Yeah, that's true. But uh, you know what? It's it's like a challenge, you know? When when they said like this is going to be the hardest patch for Protoss, I, I just gained like 300 MMR. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, man. They say it's gonna be the hardest, so you put in the effort. Yeah, I guess that's why I, I got the, the extra MMR and, and not just the MMR, man. Like, I I started developing my own style. I I started learning a build, you know, and now I can just execute it comfortably and and all that stuff. Like, the pressure that okay, I'm at a disadvantage because of the maps. Obviously, shouldn't impact a diamond level player, but sometimes, maybe sometimes. Because some yeah. maps are, are shorter, you need to be ready to defend. Sometimes, uh, actually, I don't know if you noticed, but some of the mineral, some maps have the mineral patches uh, more spread out in that arc, for example. Yeah. So you gather less minerals. And that is, I think Harstem said it at some point, on Tropical Sacrifice in the previous map pool. Ooh, nicely saving that Overlord. Yeah. Yeah. I think he said it that Tropical Sacrifice was really bad uh, in PvZ because the Zerg expands faster, so they will automatically mine the second base faster and they will gain more uh, minerals because the way that the, the mineral patches were spaced. Were spaced yeah. yeah. Of course. Oh. If you yeah. ask me, I don't really see the difference. Maybe if I pay super close attention, I can tell like, oh wait, uh, my pylon is like two seconds late or something. But let me tell you, two seconds is a long time. That that could be the difference between circlings in your natural and uh, adept in the wall. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> speaking of wall, rebellion guy wall. Um... Lock that forward gateway. I mean, I suppose it's the best wall you can possibly make. Mm, you can make one that is on the side, like on the inside, the left gateway. Yeah. Put it yeah. uh, next to the cyber core, like uh, on the left of the cyber core, not like up to the north. Ooh, Oracle comes in, and actually, there's no spore. Wait a minute. I thought those two queens from the main were going to be able to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, Rebellion. that would be crazy. Rebellion did a good job keeping, Yeah, keeps that one alive. Second Oracle pops and Hyperion gonna come in with the scout from the south side. Obi's gonna see pretty much everything. I guess this is uh, also really good uh, for for the Protoss that you can actually manage to block that uh, that natural location. Then you can just basically come in faster with the Oracle. Also, the dead airspace by the between the the triangle, the triangle third base and the main. Ooh, one oracle goes down. That's been four. Yeah. And the link counter attack is on the way. Third base is going to finish, but there's no battery. I am not exactly sure if uh, not getting a battery is a, a safe option here. There's two oracles, so this is going to be safe. But a bigger run by would have probably caused more trouble. But look at and that. No. Link is on the way with plus one. Yeah, I think uh, Rebellion setting up for a pretty good game here. Hyperion trying to get something done and looks like he's going to go for an all-in queen march again. I mean, this is pretty ballsy. Rebellion catches wind Ooh. of it with these two oracles. Yeah, and is this off of... Yeah, this is off of Hatcher attack. Uh, Hatcher attack. So th that means there's not even potential to drop creep with the overload. If you have a lair, I think you can do it, right? Yes. Like only if you have lair. I believe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, you're out. 
Look at these ravages morphing on the front on the front lines and it looks like um Hyperion's gonna pull the trigger, try to deny this third base. Okay, corrosive bars go down, they do pick off that super super battery. Ooh, and now the Oracle's trying to put in a lot of uh, damage over here, but question is will this be enough for for rebellion to hold? Ooh, and it oh. looks like it's wow. not. Actually, I'm gonna have a look. Ah, oh, th the reason Rebellion GG it is because there's some Lings running into the main. I think all the units got pulled in to defend the push on the third, and some Lings made it up into the main. Yeah, that was actually quite a painful, painful way to to lose the last game. Happens to the best, I guess. Oh, look at that! Well, I, I'm not sure honestly. How many gateways? Yeah, four gateways. I guess the, the roaches and queens in the front with the ravagers are super, super scary. Yeah, super. those queens being super tanky, man, and those corrosive bars picking off that super battery or that overcharged battery uh, pretty early on in that engagement. Yeah, nicely done by Hyperion and unlucky to Rebellion for losing to a queen walk. Yeah, it's really interesting. Queen walks coming back into play. This one, I'm not sure if this fit, hits faster or not, but it looked like a really fast build. Yeah, I mean, this this game ended at 625, so... Yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty crazy, honestly. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it from us. Once again, thank you, Jono, for joining me. And well, thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, huge shout-out to, to Linklad. I'll have his Twitter in the description. And as always, check out CSO Esports. We'll have everything uh, linked in the description of this video. Yeah, if you liked it, consider hitting that thumbs up and maybe share it with your friends. Ring the notification bell after you subscribed, of course. That's a must. And if you would like to see us more as a duo on my channel, then feel free to let me know. So yeah. I guess uh, we said everything we had to say, right? Yep, 100%. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me once again. Anytime, man. It's always fun to cast with you. Okay, that's it from us. Hope you had a good time. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.